Okay, hi everyone. Uh, in lieu of our class this week, since we didn't have class Monday night, I decided to make this little video. Um, the issue is since we're a once a week class and next Monday is Martin Luther King, uh, I won't see you for until like late January. Um, and normally that's a little bit of an issue in a class, but it's even a bigger issue for this class because of how unique this class is uh, and how the class is structured. Uh, in short, and you'll, you'll see why in a minute, um, we have to get moving really quick in this class in order to accomplish what we're going to accomplish. And if we have to wait until late January to start, I don't think we're going to make it. So um, uh, since uh, the snow and ice have kept us apart this evening, I decided we should at least try to do um, something to introduce you to the class and also give you a few things to do in the next two weeks since I had some tasks for you that I was going to tell you tonight in class that are, are important for us to start getting the ball rolling so that we can actually have our exhibition in time. So um, most of you know me. Uh, if you don't, my name is Dr. Coltrane. I teach art history at Shepherd. Um, there might only be one or two of you, I, I don't know, but most of you have uh, been in my classes before. Uh, though to be perfectly honest, this is going to be a, a very new kind of class, a very different kind of class than I've ever taught. Um, and maybe I should just say that right up front, I've never taught a class like this, nor have I ever been in a student in a class like this. So it's kind of a, this is an experimental class, both for me and I guess you're all my guinea pigs. Um, uh, I'm excited about it. I think it'll be fun and neat, but uh, it also, usually when you do something like this, there's a few bumps along the way and, and things you don't expect that come up. So um, it'll be a class where you might have to be a little bit more flexible than normal too, with regard to homework and assignments. I'll always try to be really clear in class on what I want you to do for the next week, but it's hard to plan it all out and structure it. You'll see when I get to my, my calendar for the semester, there's a few things that are kind of like very loosely defined as a way of acknowledging that this is a different kind of class. Um, so let me just go through the syllabus uh, with you here on screen in this little video. Um, and then I'm going to show you a few websites and give you just a, a little bit of, I guess, homework. But it's kind of fun homework, so don't get too stressed about it. Um, so uh, you can see on the syllabus, uh, my office hours, really long, so I won't say them out loud, email, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then we have our, our course description. I'll just kind of describe what the class is. So this is a, this is a class I conceived of a few years ago, um, in part because of one of your peers that'll be in the class. We're going to have a, a, a grad student in our class named John White, who's going to be kind of my teaching assistant. Hi, John, if you're watching. Um, and uh, he uh, was a student in my Art 403 class, which is Art Criticism and Aesthetics. And um, he was uh, doing, he was uh, pretending to be Shepherd Fairy for the semester. And um, he started. Uh, getting some Shepherd Fairy prints. Uh, and I went to New York and went to a Shepherd Fairy show and was really excited about the stuff Shepherd Fairy was doing and realized, well, I could, you know, I'm not a really wealthy guy, but Shepherd's Fairy prints are pretty affordable um, for somewhere between 50 and $250. You can get most Shepherd Fairy prints that have been released in the last few years. If you're good, you can get them for 50 bucks. Um, and you get a signed, numbered print by a relatively iconic artist, which is pretty cool. And um, uh, as I started uh, looking into this little kind of segment of the art world, it started really kind of expanding. And I realized how much there was going on in the world now due to new technologies, the internet, social media, all the things you hear. Um, and the different ways that the art world is, is altering and expanding for the long time the art world was this very kind of narrow place where there's like galleries in major cities and very rich people that go into those galleries and auction houses and pay a lot of money for art. And for the average person, we could, you know, we could go and look, but that's about all we could ever do. We could maybe buy a, you know, a poster at a poster store or something. But um, obviously the internet and social media have opened up new possibilities for artists, for things they could do, ways they could get their works out to average people. And um, Shepard Fairey is just one in a long list of artists who have uh, started looking into these kind of places in the art world and exploring possibilities where they can sell their works for relatively cheaply, 
um, to average people. Um, and uh, I... <coughs> Pardon me, I got, I, I got a cough, if you couldn't tell. <coughs> um, the more I looked, the more excited I got, and the more interested I got in these artists. Uh, many of these artists who begin as street artists, but not necessarily. A lot of them are just graduates from art school who want to get their their art out to the world and make a living as an artist. There was this whole world, this whole online community where these artists were selling their works for relatively cheap prices. Um, and you could, you know, own your own sign, sometimes numbered, sometimes limited edition, sometimes not. Uh, work from relatively iconic kind of artists today. And um, I started buying a, a few prints here and there on my own. And then I convinced our department to make a small investment to start buying two or three prints a semester as well to start to build a collection for ourselves, with the goal being that someday I'd get enough prints that I could teach a class like this and we could put on an exhibition uh, on campus, with the goal of the exhibition being bringing compelling, interesting, thought-provoking, visually stunning works of art to the average Shepherd student's life a little bit. Um, and I think the, the best space on campus for doing that, the most accessible spot, is the big reading room on the main floor of the library. Maybe some of you have studied there before or at least seen it. Um, we frequently have faculty exhibitions that will hang works of all art on the walls in that space. And I thought, what better way to try to engage the average Shepherd student than to use that space, something a lot of students might just happen to wander by and maybe catch something out of the corner of their eye that looks interesting and they want to walk into it, um, as a space to where we could put some of these prints up and mount uh, an exhibition. Uh, like I said, with the goal being art that is compelling enough to make somebody want to come and look and read and find out a little more about it. Um, so that was two or three years ago when I started collecting uh, these prints. Um, so over the past couple of years, uh, our department's bought, oh, maybe 10, 12 prints. I have an individual has bought maybe, I don't know, 10, 20 prints. Um, and so we were at the point where I felt like between uh, the prints that I have, the prints the department has, uh, John White, uh, one of our, like I mentioned, our grad student is going to be helping me with the class. Uh, I know he's been collecting prints as well, so... He said he'd be willing to loan a few of his prints. I felt like we could make an exhibition. We could do this. Um, and so that's what this class is. This class is designed to both introduce you to this kind of new part of the art world, and uh, you are going to be the people who craft this exhibition and help us put it on. So I think it'll be fun. Uh, I think it'll be an interesting class. A kind of It's a more kind of active, engaging class. It won't just be like a, a lecture class where... I talk and you take notes and there's tests. Uh, it's much more the point of the class is our class project, the exhibition, and everything we do is going to kind of be working towards putting on that show towards the end of the semester. Um, so as you can see on the, the syllabus here, uh, there's no books to buy. Um, to be honest, there, I don't think there's like a book per se that encapsulates what we're doing as a class. I will have some things for you to read. Um, so I'll have them as PDF files on Sakai. Uh, most of these I don't have loaded yet because I'm still waiting. There were a couple books I really wanted to, to get and read through and check and see if what they had was really good, and I'm waiting to get some of those for interlibrary loan. So I want to figure out if I, if I want to use those readings in place of other things before I put the other ones up. Uh, some weeks, some of the readings will just be websites, you know, uh, articles that were written online, and I'll send you links to them and you'll read through them, but uh, no book to buy. So let's talk about how you get your grade real quick, and then we'll come back to the, the class project and your homework uh, for two weeks from tonight. Um, so uh, I'll take roll every class, um, and uh, just let me scroll down as you see. There is 900 points possible in the class. Uh, so uh, 100 of those points will come just from participating in the class in general. Uh, I give you half of those just for showing up. I'll take roll. Uh, if you're here at all the classes, then you get your 50 points, no problem. Um, if you happen to miss class, I will let you miss one class. This is a tricky class because it's a one night a week class. And we're going to be mounting our exhibition in the third week in March. And to be perfectly honest, that's kind of like when the class maybe not ends, but pretty much that's the conclusion of the class. So 
we're kind of on like a shortened semester almost because of that. And then we have our cancellation tonight on Martin Luther King Day. So basically, instead of this being a full semester class, it feels more like we have a late January to late March class. We've sort of had like a month, maybe a month and a half lopped off here. And so we have to kind of move quickly. And so it's, it's really important that you try to beat all the classes. If you happen to wake up sick or you have a major conflict, if you have what seems to be a legitimate uh, documented excuse, I will excuse one absence. But I can't excuse any more than that because missing one of these classes is the, the equivalent of missing two or three classes for a different class. So after that, each absence will cost you um, 30 points after your one, uh, if you excuse it with me, legitimate documented uh, absence. The other 50 points are going to come from just participating in the class. And to be perfectly honest, this might be the class in which it's going to be easiest to participate in of any class you've ever taken because... Well, I will have some little lectures and things I want to present at times. Much of the class will me be showing up and seeing what you guys said over the past week in our online discussion forum, and then we're just going to talk about what you said. So it's a class where you really do have to engage. The whole premise of the class is to kind of turn it over to you guys and to let you make decisions on what you think this exhibition should look like. Um, so me talking doesn't, doesn't do that. Um, so, as long as you talk and you're engaged in the class, you'll be fine on that front. Um, okay, let me just go through a few of the assignments you're going to have and how you'll get your grade. Um, for the first few classes, for the first three or four classes, your homework is going to be largely produced in our online discussion forum through Sakai. Um, uh, basically, I'll give you tasks, I'll give you some documentaries to watch, some websites to check out, and I want you to kind of report back on things you found, and you'll make a, a post in the discussion forum, and I'll give you grades for, for doing those. Basically, uh, just to give you a sense of how the class is, maybe I'm going to skip to the calendar real quick. I'll come back to, to the assignment. So if you see, we have January 22nd, where we'll kind of be starting, and we have three weeks, really, to figure out what works of art are going to go on the wall at this exhibition. So we have History of printmaking, narrowing the choices, choosing the work. So by February 5th, uh, so, you know, less than a month away, we basically need to say, all right, this is what we want our exhibition to be. Uh, and there's a reason for that. One is we do have a small budget for the class, and you guys are going to have the freedom to buy some works of art for the department. You to, to choose what works of art you want in the exhibitions, and um, we'll be democratic about it. You'll be voting on them in the class, and, you know, majority is going to win. Um, but we have to have time to order those. We have to, you know, order it. They have to have time, time to ship it. And then we have to have time to frame it. Uh, you can see down here, late February and early March, we're going to be doing framing. So, um, we have to move quick. We got to figure out what our show is going to look like basically in the next three weeks. So for these, uh, for these, the first three weeks of class, most of your homework is going to be involved in finding works of art that you think would be good works of art to put on the, the walls of the library for our show, okay? You thinking about what the show should really be about. Should there be a, a, a theme that it all revolves around? Should it be a single artist? Should it be lots of artists? Should it be totally random and, and just, you know, 20 good works of art on no coherent theme? Um, I'm going to have very little kind of authoritative kind of stepping in and controlling things. It's, this is largely going to be crafted democratically by what, what you guys want to do. Sorry again. Um, uh, that means you need to start looking at possibilities. Um, I will bring in some of my prints. So I'll show you the things the department has. But you also need to start looking online to see what prints could be available for purchase that you might want to use in the exhibition that we could you know, order uh, and ship in time for us to get here. The other thing we're going to do is I'm going to have you all write uh, letters uh, and emails to artists that you like and uh, ask them if they'd be willing to donate anything to our show, kind of explain what we're doing, and see if they'd be willing to help us out and send us any of their works on either a loan or as a, as a kind of gift, uh, as a way of kind of getting their names out and spreading their art to the world. Um, I have no idea what that's going to result in. I don't know if that's going to be 10 artists that send us something or if it's going to be we don't get any responses at all. I was going to have this originally be due... Um, at our next class, but I, it's 
think we need some class time to talk through this a little bit more, so I'll be putting that one off um, when we we'll have to adjust the syllabus. But you'll be doing that pretty soon, pretty quickly in class. But that means you got to figure out what artists you even want to write to. Like, who do you like? What do you think matters? So that's pretty much what um, the next two weeks before I see you for our first official class you'll be working on. Looking into this kind of world on the internet, watching a few documentaries, looking at different websites, and exploring, finding some artists you like, finding some works of art you like, finding some websites you think are interesting. Uh, and then what you'll be doing is you're going to make a post in our online discussion forum where you basically report back, where you say, here's five works of art that I think are really cool, and this is, and you're going to list why you like each one of those works of art, why you think it would be a, a good one to choose for our show. Uh, and here's a few websites I found that are interesting you should check out, things like that. So the first uh, few weeks, uh, we're not going to be doing uh, too much official um, reading. There might be a reading, probably one week where we do a few readings, but most of your homework is going to be kind of online, kind of searching for works of art. And then the next phase of the class, after we've chosen the works on February 5th, uh, for two weeks we're going to talk about exhibitions themselves. We're going to talk about kind of exhibition theory. We're going to talk about kind of possibilities for things, things that we can do in an exhibition outside of just like hang the art on the walls to try to enhance the experience of the viewer. Um, one of the things each of you will be doing is composing one of the text panels um, that will accompany the works of art in the, in the exhibition. We're going to start talking about the way text can be used, the most effective kinds of text, the best way to do it, how to write it. Uh, and then you will eventually be writing a couple drafts. You can see on February 26th and March 5th, you've got some drafts of that text panel that'll be due, and then your final draft will be due on March 19th. Uh, these two weeks will probably be the weeks you do the most reading, um, uh, because we're going to read a bit about exhibition and museum kind of theory uh, to try to think about what we want our show to look like and what things we can do as a class to try to enhance that. Um, and then you can see, of course, we have spring break thrown in there, so we lose another week. Um, and uh, the show opening, so the library uh, has one, had one request of us. We're going to have our show opening on March 26th. Um, they did ask us, though, to come install the show over the weekend, just because the library is much less busy on the weekend, and it'll, you know, it might be a little bit loud. <coughs> so... Um, I know this is nasty, and I hate doing it, but you're going to have a Saturday assignment. On the upside, you're going to have a number of classes, basically. You're going to have a couple classes where we, we won't meet to kind of balance that out. Um, but I need you to put this on your calendars. I need you to ask for it off of work. If you have a job, you work Saturdays. Um, because we need to come together as a class on March 26th, which is a Saturday. And at 10 a.m. in the library, we need to show up right when it opens, which, and that's when we're going to put the show up. Uh, so that's the Saturday right before the Monday where we'll have the official show opening. So probably the most important date for the class is that is March 26th, Saturday morning. We're all going to get together and uh, put up our exhibition. So that's the kind of goal. And then uh, we kind of wind down and, and we'll talk about a few things, but it's not going to be really intense because that's really the focus of the class. The 26th, our class will just be hanging out in the library at the opening. Um, and a cancel class the next week uh, in to kind of balance out the fact that you had to show up on a Saturday. Uh, then we're going to have one class where we kind of talk about our show, well, how we thought it went, what was good, what was bad, what succeeded, what failed, what we'd do better, what, what would be better next time, theoretically. Uh, and then in our last class, we'll just go to the library and we're going we're gonna to take the show down. I think they'll let us take it down on a Monday night because we can be a little more quiet, hopefully taking it down than we are putting it up. So that's, that's the plan. Um, uh, so it's a pretty, uh, it's a unique class. It's a different class, I think, than most of the classes you've had. Definitely, like I said, most classes I've taught. So let me go back up. Uh, some of the assignments I've talked about now, um, so I mentioned you're going to be writing letters to artists, uh, to ask for donations, so you're going to get some points for that. Um, you're going to be doing framing. Um, we're going to meet, uh, a lot of you know Kevin Dart, who's the, the kind of, uh, manager of our sculpture studio. Um, I'm going to meet with him and we're going to order supplies and wood and plexiglass and paint and various things we need. And then we're going to go up for one of our classes and he's going to give us a, a demo on framing, on how to build the frames. We want to kind of be consistent and we want to have just a, a simple uh, frame that we're going to use for all of our works of art. But of course, all these works of art will be different dimensions and different things. And um, uh, each of you will be responsible. We might divide into teams depending on how this is going. But 
each of you will be responsible for putting forth some effort in creating frames and getting works of art um, framed and ready to go for the gallery. Um, on the weeks that I do have you read something, I'm going to have you write a little response. Uh, this is the kind of thing that most of you have me, if you have me for other classes, I do this in all my classes, um, just to show, just to both make you think about the readings a little more while you're reading them and also give me some evidence that you did the reading. Uh, generally, like a one-page, single-spaced summary of what you read. Uh, usually, I'll give you some questions to think about uh, and then have you kind of write on that. I'll give you points for that. Uh, as I mentioned, you'll be writing a text panel uh, in the show. There will be two drafts and then a, a two rough drafts and a final draft. So you're going to get 50 points for each of those drafts. Um, so that will be a substantial portion of your grade. Um, uh, and then a huge chunk of your grade, 200 points of the 900, will come from what I call the exhibition role. What we're going to do is, when mounting an exhibition, there's lots of little things that have to be done. Um, uh, you know, just kind of quality control stuff, making sure all the frames are good, hanging things on the wall, uh, getting things printed off, maybe printing off the text panels. Um, I'm hoping we're going to have some kind of uh, banner or something where we have a bit of text kind of prior to people going into the show, uh, there, uh, which requires people to write the words. It requires design skills to kind of craft the show. We want to be able to advertise the show on campus. So for those of you who are graphic designers, you might be utilizing some of your your abilities to try to create a poster, to advertise for the show, all these kind of little things. So what we're going to do is basically, and, and we were going to do this tonight, but we'll, we'll do it next time, uh, is think about all these roles. I'll kind of describe some of the different roles, then everybody will kind of choose the one they feel more comfortable with, what they want to do, uh, what they're most valuable doing, and uh, you'll have your exhibition role. As long as you fulfill your role well, you'll get a good grade on this, and if you don't, if you don't show up and don't hand things in on time and things like that, then you won't get as good a grade, but that'll basically how it works. Now, the, the last thing is you're going to write a, a small research paper. Now, this is, again, probably different than most research papers. Uh, the premise is if you're going to write, so all of you, are, for one of the works of art in the show, each of you are going to write a text panel. Well, you can't write a text panel unless you know what you're writing about. You need to know who the artist is. You need to know what their works of art are like. You need to know about this specific work of art, and maybe the, the ideas it evokes, or the the other works of art it references, or whatever it might be that makes helps it to communicate. And you can't you can't write a good text panel unless you have all that information already in your mind. So, what we're going to do before you write your text panel is you're going to be doing this research paper. Once you settle on, okay, this is the work of art I'm in charge of. Uh, you need to do research on that artist, on this specific work, on the ideas it brings up. And write a relatively short three-page double-spaced paper where you kind of summarize uh, your research. So again, a kind of non, not a really formal research paper. We have like you know ten different books and articles and things. This will be mostly based on things you find online. Um, but uh, this is an important part because, like I said, if our if our tech panels are going to be good, you need to know what you're talking about. So as you can see, most of the goals are of the assignments are aimed at kind of exposing you to this part of the art world. And then really taking that exposure and focusing those efforts uh, onto this exhibition. Um, uh, my late policies on there. Uh, if it's things we're handed in one week, it's twenty percent off. If it's in two weeks, it's fifty percent off. And then I won't accept late work after the deadline. <coughs> and maybe it should go without saying. No, for something like your text panel, if you're two weeks late, that doesn't do us any good because we had to put it on the wall. <laughs> so um, there are certain things that. If it's even one, if your final draft of your text panel isn't ready to go by the time we hang the show up, I'm not going to give you any points for it. So, um, you know, there's some obvious stuff maybe like that. Most of this other stuff is the general uh, jargon I put in about uh, don't plagiarize. If you need extra help or have disabilities, to um, come talk about that. But uh, I'm not going to worry about that for um, tonight. You can read over that if you really want to. Um, okay, so. Uh, Kind of went over the, the calendar here, so let's focus in now on um, this next week. Like I said, we have Martin Luther King Day on the 15th. I will see you on January 22nd, hopefully barring any unforeseen bad weather. That will really mess us up even more. Um, so for next week, I'm going to take off this emails to artists. I don't want you to worry about that yet because we haven't even started to really narrow down what artists you were interested in, which we are going to talk about in class tonight, but we're not going to worry about that. What I do want you to do... Uh, and I'll show you some of these in a minute. I want you to check out a bunch of websites. 
Uh, I'm going to have in this announcement I send out in our Sakai site, I have a huge list of websites, so I want you to check them all out. And then I want you to find some more websites also, because there's a bunch of, as you'll see, links to different things within these websites. Um, what, I, what I want your goal to be, as you look at all these websites, I want you to find five works of art that you think would be good works of art for our exhibition. And I also want you to find three websites that aren't in the list of websites I sent you that you stumbled upon and you thought, that's a cool website. I like this work of art on it, but I also like some of the other works of art on it. You guys should all check it out. Then you're going to post a link to that so the rest of us can go see what you found. Um, and then when we get together in class on the 22nd, uh, I'm going to talk about the history of printmaking a little bit. We're also going to spend time kind of looking at all the works of art that you all have proposed and then um, considering them. Now, one of the tricky things that's going to happen with this class is you're going to see, as you start to look at these websites, there's kind of two markets for these works of art. There's when they first go on sale to the public, usually for relatively low prices, and then there's the secondary market after they get all gobbled up really quick by people like us, collectors, and then they get resold on eBay or in um, different forums where people collect these things and they trade and sell to each other. Um, now, we have some constraints. Um, because we're using a kind of school money, they don't like us buying things from eBay very much uh, because they, you know, there's weird kind of legality things with that. Um, so one of the challenges we have is that's a huge secondary market. Uh, that You know, there might be a Shepard Fairy print from three years ago that you're like, that is the greatest print ever, and we should put that on the wall. And maybe it originally sold for 55 bucks. But now it sells, you know, we get on eBay for 250 bucks, which still we might be able to pull off. Um, I should give you a sense. It might, it depends a little bit on how much money we're going to have to put into materials for wood and plexiglass and paint and all those things for the framing. So our budget has to cover that too. But I'm guessing we're going to have close to somewhere between 800 and $1,000 to spend on works of art in the class, which is cool. So, you know, if there's a print that's $250, if, every, if we really like that one and we think it's worth that, Theoretically, we could we could get that, um, but it also means that we have to figure out how to buy that. And if it's on eBay, two hundred fifty dollars. From what I've been told, we're probably not going to be able to buy that one. Uh, there's a chance, but probably not. So for the most part, what we need to look for are prints that are either on sale currently on a website. So like you can right now just go to a website and buy it, or prints that will be going on sale in the next three to four weeks because they will frequently be announced a little bit in advance. Um, now those, it's kind of a bit of a game. You can't guarantee you get it. You have to like sit by your computer and try to click your mouse really fast and buy it. But if there's one of those coming up that people really like, um, we can do our best to try to, to grab those before they get grabbed by other people. Um, so let's say this. Uh, for After you go through all the websites, I want you all to come up with five works of art that you think are great works of art that should go up in our show. Um, and, uh, let's say that three of those have to be things that can actually be bought on like a regular website. Like we could go right now and buy it. Two of them can be things that were previously sold online, but are now sold out and you have to go to a secondary market like eBay or something to get them because we might be able to get those. So let's say three have to be on sale on websites. Two of them can be things you could get only in a secondary market. Okay. <coughs> and I also... <coughs> Sorry, it's probably good when you have class. I'm, I'm a little bit sick, as you can probably tell, as I'm guessing half of you are with it being winter and flu season. Um, I want you to find three websites that uh, are interesting, cool, well-designed, have nice works of art on them that you stumbled across. And again, they can't be the websites that I have necessarily like sent you links to. They need to be kind of unique, different ones. Um, so before January 22nd, in our online discussion forum, you need to post your five works of art three of which have to be purchasable, two of which can be in the secondary market, and the three websites. And after each work of art, I want you to type up a short paragraph justifying why you think it's a good work of art. Like, What is it about this work of art that is compelling? Let me say that in short, my standards, and, and maybe yours as well, but they're going to be yours, because <laughs> this is one of the places I'm going to be authoritative. Uh, my standards for what I think these works of art need to be are, are really twofold. And, and this, to be honest, goes for almost every what I think are good works of art, but specifically for this exhibition, um, I think we definitely want things that are visually dynamic. Um, 
we have to pull people into that reading room. Some people are going to go in there and sit and read, but what we really want to be able to do is we want to be able to have a bit of a magnet in there. We want to have things they can see from a distance that if they catch out of the corner of their eyes, they are curious about, that they want to go in and look at it a little bit closer. So we definitely need to think about things that are visually dynamic. Like It has to be that. That being said, then if we're able to do that, if the magnet works and we get them to our painting or our, our print or whatever it might be, we want them to go beyond just, oh, it looks cool. I think we definitely want to think about what messages are conveyed. Are these messages clear enough for the average Shepherd student to understand and get? Um, uh, and are the messages interesting and compelling? So those are my really two criteria. One, that it's visually, visually dynamic, and two, that it sends some kind of message. So as you try to justify your five works of art in the online discussion forum, that's what I want you to focus on those two criteria. Like, what about this makes it visually dynamic? Uh, and two, what message do you think it sends and how is it sending it? Okay. So um, make sure you post that by our, our next class. Now, let me kind of introduce you now to, I'm not going to show you all the websites I sent you links to, but I want you to check them all out. And they're really fun. And you're going to, uh, one thing about this is if you're anything like me, it becomes a little bit of a, it gets, it's kind of contagious comes a little bit of a game, um, and it's got that kind of game-like quality that makes you want to keep playing uh, and be interested in it. So I think you're going to have no problem clicking lots of the links and seeing things. But let me show you where I kind of want you to start, and then you're going to be kind of branching out from there. And to be honest, I'm an amateur at this. Like, I, I, I've looked into this part of that world, but there might be websites and things that I've never seen that are amazing and much better than things I've found. But let me show you the things I've found, at least in kind of my experience with this corner of the art world. Okay, so um, let me show you a few different things. Some of these things are going to be kind of like blogs that people put together um, in their attempt to kind of get the words out uh, about new prints being released. Some of these things will be um, like online discussion forums where the people who like to collect these prints get together and uh, share what they've got, talk about artists, new prints coming out, all those kinds of things. And then some of them will be websites where works of art are being sold. And I've got a few of those uh, uh, to show you. One thing I want to preface this with is this, this segment of the art world is kind of an interesting place where there's a lot of intersecting between fine art prints from, from people who I think view themselves as part of the art world in some way. Uh, like I would guess this uh, first print on this uh, blog here, Posters and Prints blog, which sometimes is updated really frequently, sometimes not, so it kind of depends on whatever the person running it wants to do, I guess. Um, I would guess this guy who I've never heard of, Henrik Uldalen, imagines himself to be an, an artist, right? You talk to him like, yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an artist. Um, I'm probably, probably a painter, though maybe using photography as well in some senses. Um... That being said, if we scroll down a little, my guess would be pretty quick we're going to run into something which looks more like, oh, let's see. Oh, look, they're all, right when I said you're going to find something that's not, doesn't look like art, they all look like art. <laughs> you're going to find something eventually, I promise, that looks more like pop culture. Um, uh, oh, shoot. I didn't prepare enough, apparently. Sorry. I promise there's going to be one soon. Actually, I know where there's one on this next blog I'm going to show you. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a bunch. Okay, so here's a good example. The Golden Axe by Mike Saputo. Now, The Golden Axe was a video game when I was a little kid. Maybe some of you played it. Um, this is clearly something a little different. Not that it's not art, but it doesn't feel um, the same as this print here on your screen or the ones we, we looked at on in the previous blog, uh, like this one. Uh, it's more kind of aimed at pop culture, uh, Comic Con ish audiences, and I'm, I'm not disparaging that. I, I went to the Comic Con when I was a kid, though. It used to be like not the cool thing to do, is when you really had to be kind of a nerd. Um, now you only have to be like a semi to go to the Comic Con. Uh, but it's it's not aimed at like maybe you know people who collect art as much as people who collect like posters of pop cultural stuff. So you're gonna see that is that there's a big overlap in this segment of the art or, or this kind of online community between those who collect things they would define more as art and things more defined as maybe like posters uh, or, or prints of pop culture things which are a little different. We're going to be focusing more on the, the artsy side like I, I don't 
I don't want our exhibition to be like the Golden Axe and Star Wars and Deadpool and things like that. Not that those aren't sometimes cool, but I don't think that's what we want to necessarily do in the library. So focus mostly uh, when you're looking at these blogs on the things that look more like what you think like uh, looks like art right there. So if you see, for instance, um, we've got our, our print here. You see this one, you're like, wow, that's amazing. That should totally be on the wall. The first thing, we'll see the artist, we'll see the title. The medium's going to be important. We're going to talk about this next class. Um, this is a, a gicle print, which is basically means somebody made a painting, they photographed the painting, and then they printed it digitally. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, that versus more kind of mechanical and technical processes like screen printing and woodblock printing and lino cuts and things like that. And, and we might want to buy G clays. We might not. We'll see. Um, and usually at the bottom here, they have things. So you click on it and it will take you to the website where that thing is being, you know, sold. So anyhow, so this goes to a new art gallery and you see there, of course, normally they're in U.S. dollars or at least British pounds, which are pretty close. This is in some kind of currency that I have no idea what that translates to. So we may not be able to pull that one off. <coughs> but one good thing about uh, these blogs is most of the things they they put are either on sale right now or going to be on sale very soon. So, for instance, some of you might have seen as I scroll down, here's a Shepherd Fairy print. This Shepherd Fairy print is going on tomorrow. I'm going to try to buy it. I don't know if I'm going to get to it because uh, his heart's prints are really hard to get. But I'm going to make a, an effort. It's 55 bucks on Shepherd Fairy's website tomorrow between 12 o'clock and 1 o'clock on Tuesday, January 9th. If any of you want to also buy one, they tend to rise in value pretty sharply. Um, uh, usually they're within somewhere in the $1 to $200 range within an, a week or two and frequently in the 2 to $300 range within a year. So, you know, it's not a bad investment if you got 55 bucks laying around. But I shouldn't tell you that because then I'm going to have a harder time getting one. But nevertheless, he'll have 450 of them. The addition's there. Got a link to it. So you can see some of the things uh, are blogs like this. It's a, a pretty common artist on these blogs, Josh Keys. Um, see, his is a little more expensive, 250. I think we want to keep. I think we want to keep it under about 350. I think that should be our ceiling. So if you see a print that's 500, 600, 700 dollars, we probably need to say like, all right, that's probably not for us because that's going to eat up uh, too much of our budget. We want to be able to buy at least a few things, hopefully. So, um, uh, you know. Obviously, it's probably easier to make an argument for a $55 Shepherd Fairy print versus a $250 print. Uh, that being said, that doesn't mean we couldn't buy something like this Josh Keys print if you really, you know, if, if democratically we think that's the work of art we want on the board. So again, you see here, um, this print is actually, it's probably, let's see if it's sold out. Uh, no, it looks like it's still, looks like it's still available. Um, uh, sometimes they'll do uh, time edition prints. Um, sometimes they'll do, uh, numbered editions. Um, so you can see this one is signed and numbered of 175. Um, sometimes they're open editions. They're not signed or numbered. Uh, but anyhow, now one of the nice things about these blogs also, like this one, this posters and prints blog, is you can see there's a few things on this right side. There's an archive of all the different things that have happened in the past few years. So you can go back, you know, you can look at has print. So, Let's say what was it? Let's see where a good month was. So in November 2014, there were 109 different links. So if we click on November of 2014, oh, we got oh look a Mr. Brainwash print. Uh, if you don't know who Mr. Brainwash is, I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest you get to know him uh, uh, before next class. But I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit. But so we've got all these uh, different prints and things. Um, now most of these probably won't still be on sale because it was two or three years ago they went on sale. But we might be able to find them in the, in a secondary market possibly. Um, the other thing is, uh, James Jean is an illustrator who's really popular in these, um, uh, forums. You'll see his prints again. This one's 60 bucks here. My guess is this eight color lithograph now sells for four or 500 bucks. Um, he's, uh, his works tend to go up in value pretty quick. <coughs> now, so we might not be able to get this James Jean. He might be like, oh, that's really cool. I want that James Jean print. And you click on it, but it's probably some kind of dead link because, you know, that doesn't work there anymore, right? But sometimes it might lead you to a website. So here, go to shop, huh, what is this shop? I wonder, well, there's like collectibles and all these different things. Oh, but wait, there was artwork. So maybe I just found some artwork and, oh, whoops, there's not. But there was some artwork in collectibles, let's see. So, no, maybe not. It's iffy. 
All right, so this wasn't the best example. But sometimes what it'll do is it'll lead you to, um, you know, you find one work of art you like, and even though it was two or three years ago, it'll lead you maybe to that artist's website um, or something like that. So maybe if you like this print, let's we're going to take another gamble on this guy's print. And this one was only 30 bucks. You see, this is a smaller edition. Now, this is probably the artist's website himself. If it's one of these .bigcartel.com websites, this is a an online uh, uh, system for getting your art website up and running. So a lot of artists have these, if you see that. So you can see this artist has... Um, all these, all these prints on his website that are still for sale. So it may not be the one that you saw originally, though maybe it is. You may be like, oh, but I like that one, and it's 40 bucks, and I want to check that out. So you click on that, and you're like, oh, it's not a digital uh, print. It's manually printed uh, with, uh, you say how? I don't know if he says how. Um, maybe a screen print? Uh, but anyhow, so you see what he's got there. It says it's going to be... Numbered edition of 62 prints. It's signed. Oh, there's a couple artists here in this one. Um, a collaboration between two artists. Um, anyhow, so even though we started with a totally different work of art, by click and it was from a few years ago, by clicking on it, all of a sudden we were exposed to this new artist website. And maybe there's something cool, maybe there's not, but it, it exposes you. So I would encourage you to actually look back through some of the old months, uh, like we're like I'm doing right here on my screen, scroll through and see like oh what comes up and if you see a work of art you like and again you can just scroll through pages uh check out that website and even or check out the artist so like for instance uh that james jean website didn't work very well but you can still google james jean and he probably has an instagram page and probably has worked with other places and that's the other thing on the on the left hand side you see over here these are advertisements for for websites um so like this is shepherd fairy's website this is a pretty common gallery, the COA gallery, um, that you can buy things on as well. So again, you go to um, uh, the website and uh, you can see what additions they have on for uh, uh, sale. So anyhow, um, the uh, the links here on the left uh, of this web page are also good to kind of play around with. There, I told you that Josh Keys guy saw a minute ago. He's pretty common. So you click on Josh Keys. Oh, Josh Keys is down. That's not good. You know, these are artists. Every once in a while, websites go down. But usually there's lots of cool stuff, too. So anyhow, that's a good blog. Another one uh, is this one called 411 Posters. Um, uh, again, has similar things in that he'll highlight new works of art that are going to be available for sale soon. But then there's also these advertisements. So Spoke Art's really common. In fact, I think I have a link to Spoke Art that you're going to check out this week. Uh, but Spoke Art's another kind of online-ish gallery. It has a real gallery, but it's also done online. And they have a store, uh, you know, a shop section here where they have lots of prints uh, and uh, some new ones, some old ones, kind of a mixture. Uh, anyhow, you'll see all these, the combination of you can either look at the advertisements and check out some of these websites um, or, oh, see, there's what I'm talking about, more pop culture, like a Back to the Future poster thing. Um, but then you might see something that looks more like, uh, like fine art. You're like, oh, wait, well, that's different. So I want to check that thing out. Um, and you get to click on it, and it was on sale December 21st. Let's see if it's still on sale. <coughs> go here, and go to the shop, and it looks like it's still on sale. I have uh, a guy named uh, Mike uh, Sufton. I do have one of his prints in the, the collection. I'll show you guys. So it's a little different. It's kind of similar to this, I guess. Um, so anyhow, 100 bucks for a 24 by 30 fig uh, inch screen print. So if you're like, hey, that's amazing. We should get that. Uh, that would, you know, be kind of thing to get. So even though this one was posted back on December 21st, it's still available. So sometimes they go really quick. Other times they, they last for a while. So play around on this website too. Check out the, the links on the side. Um, but also uh, you can scroll back through old pages. You can see you can you can click on like art, they have art prints and movie posters. You can click on just like art prints and it'll just sort it by the art prints and Oh, wow, it took this in art, so maybe it doesn't sort so well. But <laughs> uh, I guess everything is tagged in art print, so maybe that doesn't work. Uh, but anyhow, sorry. Uh, but you can scroll back through lots of pages here and uh, see older things there as well. Um, oh, sorry, i got to close that one. Okay, so uh, I want to talk now about a couple kind of like forums that people get together and talk about these things in, and, and I think it would be a good place to kind of engage it. So uh, probably I think the biggest one is this Expresso Beans. 
You can see on the home page there is another section that's hot today, and these are all the prints. You can see this Shepherd Fairy print that's going to be sold tomorrow is on the hot thing because people are talking about it and excited about it. You click on it, and it'll tell you uh, the basics about it, the edition, where you get it from. And if it had been sold before, it'll give you a history of where its price was. Um, and, and it's kind of interesting uh, because it'll uh, it'll give you that data. So you're like, oh, wow, it originally sold for this. Now it's selling for this. Uh, and again, same thing here. You know, you're going to get the Rogue One poster. There's going to be a lot of pop culture stuff, but there will also be a lot of um, stuff. So I sh I'll go back to the Rogue One and show you. So here's the sales history over here. So originally on, uh, what, September 14th of 2017, it was selling in the $300 range, and then it dropped. And then the most recent one went back up for almost $200. Um, or no, so the original price was 80, but the last time they tracked it, it was selling for 200, uh, 250, and about 200. So um, you can see who produced it, the manufacturer, um, and things like that. Um, you can also see this is one of the places where you can actually, like, people will, will buy and sell this stuff. All along. You're going to have to create a, a password and an account on this uh, to, to use it effectively, so I'll let you kind of uh, do that. But now you can see these are the people who are all have either for sale or to trade this, and they'll, they'll list it. Now, again, I'm not totally sure if we can work our way around that, but, uh, you know, it's interesting. So there's a few ways to use this website. One is you can just, from the home page, you can look in this Hot Today section. You look, look under New Releases, see all new releases. You can even click on, they have something that's just like uh, like random. You know, you can click on the, the award winner. Um, I thought they had a random thing. Maybe they don't, or am I not seeing it? But if you click on this, like, see all hot today section, then you get this, you, know, you got 200 pages of prints that are popular today. And you can scroll through them and be like, okay, so I told you this Josh Keys guy is kind of popular. So here's one it's got from uh, Josh Keys. Uh, now, this is an original work of art. This is, you can see this, this is out of our range. <laughs> uh, and so they'll have some original ones on here, but most of the ones you'll find on here will be uh, print based. So this is a Shepherd Fairy. It was sold just a couple uh, months ago, maybe even weeks ago. Uh, it was originally $80. Um, oh, let's see if it has a price history on this one. It's pretty new, so it may not have a price history quite yet. You get a sense, though, that here's all the people that have it. People tend to be selling it for somewhere in the 150 to you know $250 range, it looks like. So it's probably worth something. There's the price history. You can see, like... Usually going for 250, it was dropping down more in the 150 range. It's crawling up a little bit now. Uh, it was originally sold in on December 16th, so you see how the prices have kind of moved. Uh, but again, originally bought for 80 bucks. It was selling for 220, basically the day of, and hasn't dropped below about 150. So Shepherd Fairy prints tend to be not bad investments. Um, anyhow, so that's a kind of cool website. They also have this forum uh, you can go on to where there's these categories that probably the most common one is either this art comments or this art discussion um, uh, where people talk about. So here's a street artist named Hush. And if you're interested in Hush, you go on and people talk about Hush. And there's, you know, 169 pages of people talking about Hush's art. Um, that sometimes gives you a sense of when new releases are coming. It lets you do a little research. If you find an artist, and you're like, oh, wow, I wonder who this guy is or this girl is. Um... If you go in this uh, art comment section, again, this is specifically about specific works of art. So this is the print Vanity 14 by Hush. Uh, it's this print right here. And this is all, basically everybody's going to talk about this one print. <coughs> Sometimes it'll have a link to where you can buy it um, on this. So it looks like this one. So this was an original, not a print. Um, so, again, it's 2500 bucks out of our price range. But... Hush also makes tons of prints, and so you can be like, wow, maybe I can't afford this $2,500 one, but this Hush guy looks kind of interesting, and then you start Googling Hush, figure out Hush is actually really, really popular, he's a street artist, I think I may have a Hush print, actually, as I've been collecting, um, but uh, you can see a lot of these are, you know, the Pearl Jam poster and things, so the Blazing Saddle poster, Dave Matthews Band, but you'll also get, uh, you know, uh, artists that have familiar names, too, so... Um, so you can play around on that as well. Um, the other, I think, at least that I've come across, most common kind of online forum where people talk about this stuff is this Urban Art Association forum. Um, so if you go to the forum, uh, this category where it just says urban art is usually the kind of most 
active one uh, where people talk about um, different works of art they've bought, things coming up for sale. People say, show us your prints. Um, uh, you know, new prints by Leo Boyd. People click on it and talk about it. One of my favorite, uh, if JR, a street photographer, you can see here, he's got a print coming up. His are usually pretty expensive, so he can't fool them. Uh, there's usually a category on here that's pretty close to the top. Uh, here's something on Barry McGee. If you don't know yet, I'm going to have you watch a documentary so you'll know. And Tracy Eamon. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's an ongoing thread under here on, like, your best work of art available for under $50 or something like that, and people will post things, and that's, I found works of art through that as well, so. <coughs> It's a forum you can kind of play around on. Um, this is a kind of unique place and a good place to go. It's entirely user-generated, but anytime a new print is kind of put up for public, people can basically post a notice here on this website. So you can see this is that Shepherd Fair print that's coming up tomorrow. So again, it's been posted on this website before it's available for sale. It gives you the, the details about it, the price, when it's being released, all those kind of thing. Nobody owns it yet because it hasn't been sold yet. You can see on the back, oh, here's some other Shepherd Fairy prints that have uh, similarly sold uh, or have been released. Um, and this moves pretty quick. Every day, it seems like there's a few new things put on here. And so this is a good place to scroll. Most of these tend to be more in the fine art realm, although you will get some kind of pop culture things too. But most of these uh, look a bit more like they're in the art world. Um, and so this is a good place to go scroll through, see works of art and say like, wow, I like that one, and is that still available? So, so for instance, if we click on this Sergio Lopez uh, print, um, it was an addition of 40 It was $40 originally, a uh, GK print. It was available in the People's Print Shop. So we can click on the People's Print Shop, and um, it'll eventually get us there. And we can look at their store, and we can look if that print is still available, right? Um, so... Uh, here we go. There it is right now. That glowing piece print by Sergio Lopez. Uh, you can get a little more information about it, probably. Um, but that is one that we could be like, okay, I like that one. It's visually dynamic. I like the message, so let's add that to our cart. Um, and so you kind of see how this can kind of work. So the art collect artcollectors.com is a really good site, too. Now let me show you just a couple of places uh, that are just like stores, basically. Probably the most... Uh, extensive uh, one is this site called 1x run um, now they do have a section for original art things but we'll look at the print section and they have hundreds and hundreds of prints you can scroll seemingly forever they always have this like countdown to make you seem like it's the end of the world but it almost never is it's going the clock's gonna restart tomorrow or something but there's lots of prints here and this is an interesting website because it's a website where basically any artist can go on and submit their print, and if they like it, they'll print it off and sell it on their website. So it's also something if some of you are into printmaking, it might be the kind of thing maybe someday you'll sell a print on this website. But you know, it might be the kind of thing that you're looking through and you just scroll through, and it's about just finding work you find is interesting. So you're like, wow, I like this one Iron Puyo by Baskin Megs. And so, one thing is this work of art can be purchased for $175. We could buy it. It's a seven color screen print, which is kind of cool. Um, but it also might just say, like, well, who are these artists? Baskin Megs. I want to know about them. And so you find, well, do they have any more? No, no more for sale here. But then you can start Googling Baskin Megs and learn about who they are. And maybe that's one of the works of art or one of the websites you want to be uh, telling your classmates about. So 1X Run um, is a, a good website to just start kind of scrolling through, find something cool uh, that you might be, think be worthy of our exhibition as well. Um, a lot of uh, artists, uh, a lot of you are familiar with the artist Swoon, and actually she's the one artist that almost certainly is going to be on our exhibition because uh, John, our grad student assistant, ha has a couple of really nice Swoon prints and we would be stupid to not use them, I think. Uh, so uh, I think she'll be one of the artists we'll show. Uh, to be honest, if you guys love Swoon, you, we could do a whole show of just Swoon and you know that would be a possibility too. Um, but... One of the really cool things about Swoon is the way she's used art to kind of like create positive change in the world. She's built these homes down in Haiti after the earthquake. Quake, and one of the ways she funds it is through the selling of prints. And she gets other artists to donate prints. And it's this thing called the Heliotrape Foundation. And you can see that um, we can shop prints here. 
And she's got all these prints. Now, none of these are signed or numbered. They do have an embossing on them. Uh, actually, they are numbered. They're li they're, well, they're a limited edition, and they're embossed. But they're all from different artists who have been willing to give Swoon basically one of their prints and let her reproduce it for the good of creating these shelters down in Haiti to help uh, poor people who lost their homes. So a lot of these are street artists, again. Um, I have a few prints I bought off here. Uh, Swood herself releases some prints on here. In fact, I think just a day or two ago, she put a couple more prints of hers up on here. Um, but this is a cool site because most of these are 60 bucks, so relatively affordable. Um, and the other thing is, one cool thing about Swoon, putting an exhibition, it allows us to kind of not only tell the story of the art, here's a couple of new Swoon prints she put up, but also to tell the story of the Heliotrope Foundation, Right. Maybe we have photographs on the wall of the shelters that are being built. You should read about uh, the Heliotrope Foundation and what it does. It's really cool. Um, and you can learn more about what they do. Uh, and so that's the other thing is not only can sometimes the works of art communicate just by themselves, but they might communicate um, other things as well. Um, so anyhow, those are the little ones I'm going to show you for tonight, but I have a bunch of links uh, that's in the Sakai announcement you should check out. So before next class, play around with these websites. Find five works of art you think would be worthy, we should buy, we should get for our, our show. And find three websites that aren't the ones I've showed you or have links to. Three new websites. They could be artist websites or online stores or if there's blogs, whatever. that might uh, be this part of the art world. Um, and have those three links as well. Okay? Uh, thanks for sitting through my long video, but it was shorter than three hours. So you're still coming out ahead. So um, I will see you guys on the 22nd of January, and we will try to hit the ground running and figure out what our exhibition is going to look like. Okay? Take care. Bye.